Today we're going to be looking at this thing. It's a VHS player. These things, if you don't recognise them, I mean, there's a whole uh, load of people who've never even seen one of these, probably, uh, which makes me feel proper old. And um, we want to play uh, Apollo 13. In fact, actually, I've got uh, three copies of uh, Apollo 13, but uh, more about that later. You recognise the front of it, uh, but this is what the insides actually look like. You don't really get to see them very often. Pretty interesting. Uh, we'll get to some more details later. Uh, why am I messing around with this? This isn't synthesizer stuff, is it? Well, 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 well. I've got a festival coming up in Bristol, uh, Machina Bristronica, uh, where we're going to have a hack table, a whole table full of hack stuff. And I want to show off these things, the 1606 electromagnetic switch. You can plug in different signals and you can switch between them with this thing. It's called a relay. And I want a visual way to show off what it's doing. So what we're going to do is have a TV and then we're going to have... A a VHS of uh, Apollo 13 playing and it's going to switch between that and the hack logo just so you can see as well as here what this module is doing and to show off the fact that you don't just have to switch synthesizer signals with this you can switch all different kinds of signals including video signals and I had this set up before in Cambridge at the synthesized festival but we always want to improve stuff we always want to get better so I want to make it more interesting and I want to put a clear top on it so you can see the insides all moving around this is an idea that's inspired by look mum no computer it did uh, same thing for one of the VHS's in this museum is not obsolete, the links are below. So you'd think this would just be really easy, right? You just take the top off and put a clear case on. Well, uh, nothing's ever, ever easy, is it? Because <laughs> this is what happens. You put it in and two seconds later, it just ejects itself. Oh dear. What's going on? Well, after five minutes of Googling, I found out that uh, there are optical sensors in here that sense when the tape is at its beginning and at its end. And when you take the top off, it messes up all of the light sensors. Let me show you. I'll put it in. And then if I cover the little light sensor that's just down here, press play. There you go, it starts working, doing its thing normally. But the moment that I uncover this light sensor, it stops and then goes for a little sequence to eject the tape. Now I could just disconnect these light sensors completely but that's going to mean when it comes to the end of the tape it's going to uh, pull the motors and pull the tape which is not going to be a good thing. So we've got to just manage the ambient light somehow. Shouldn't be too difficult, let's see if we can figure it out. Down in here you can see this uh, acrylic-y looking thing. That's a light pipe coming up. It's not the actual uh, infrared LED, it's actually a light pipe. The LED is down here somewhere and then this comes up and shoots the light out and then either side and over here you can see another light pipey thing and there's a similar one on the other side in there. This is where all the light is received from this central uh, infrared emitter. First thing I'm going to do is just try and colour it in uh, with a permanent marker on the side where it uh, doesn't need to be seeing the uh, infrared light. Hmm, is it going to do it? Oh yeah, I know that sound. No, it's not worked. Okay, so evidently we have not covered up the light enough. Next thing to try, tape. And this silver tape should uh, block the light pretty well. Okay, nice. Yeah, it does seem to be working. Uh, the only problem is this tape is just not sticky enough. It just doesn't stick in place. So not quite there yet. We've laid down some double-sided tape and now we're going to put the other tape on it. If in doubt, tape the tape. That's looking pretty good. I've cut a little channel out for this little moving part here. Let's see if it works. Oh, I was thinking about it. Hmm, <laughs> what's going on? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's working. Ah, oh, sick. Okay, that's great. And now we've just got to do the same to the one on the other side. Well, I cut it in with a Sharpie and tested it with my phone light. Uh, and I thought that would be good enough. It didn't trip it. But then I tilted it towards this uh, incandescent light. Uh, it's actually not an incandescent. It's a, uh, a gas discharge tube. Um, and it tripped it. So clearly... Uh, it's to do with the frequency of the light as well. It's an infrared uh, LED that it's detecting. So light in the more infrared frequency is gonna have much more of an effect. 
So I think I've got to go a bit further and cover it up a bit more. So I covered it with some foil and it seems to be a bit better. Uh, not perfect, the, uh, I can't bring that lamp right up to it, but I reckon good enough. Yeah, if it's a troublesome, we'll have to adapt it in future. Now we've done all that hard work uh, masking the photo sensors, I'm gonna make life even harder for myself because I wanna get rid of this thing. I wanna see the tape in it. So uh, there is a little uh, bit here that keeps the uh, cable going over. Uh, let's find a way to do that. There you go, <laughs> and that's easy enough. We'll just uh, make sure that this is tied back here, and then, um, and then we can get rid of this big metal bit. Okay, well this is where it starts to get fun. Now, there is a little part here that it needs to function mechanically. There's a little uh, stop this little bit here, so I've got to be careful not to cut that off, but apart from that, I don't think it's really doing a lot. Here we go, moment of no return. the cutaway part. Now a load of small metal parts inside a magnetic tape reader. Probably not too helpful. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, make sure we can blow as much of that out as possible. Okay moment of truth. Let's put a tape in and see if it still works. There's a good chance some of the electrics will short or something if there's uh, loads of uh, little metal filings and stuff in there but I blew it out as much as possible. Hey, there we go it seems to be working pretty good. Sick. So now we've uh, got rid of this obscuring part. We can see the tape moving around, which is really cool. We've uh, sorted nearly, pretty much, the light sensors. They might need a bit more work. Uh, now we're going to tackle the top. Uh, cut a big hole in the top and put a big piece of uh, see-through uh, acrylic on it. Right, so I put a border of masking tape around uh, and we're going to cut on the inside edge of that. That should leave us plenty of space for some uh, nuts and bolts to hold the acrylic. We're going to put the acrylic on top, then we don't have to worry about sharp edges of the cut uh, metal that will be covered by acrylic and nobody can cut their fingers on it. I should actually check that I've got a piece of acrylic big enough to cover it, shouldn't I? Well, we've got this big piece, we're going to have to cut it. Uh, don't have a proper acrylic blade for my table saw. Hmm best way to do this I mean you, with the thinner stuff you could just kind of score it and snap it off but it never looks very good uh, this stuff is pretty thick well let's worry about that in a second let's cut the hole first this is a pretty uh, wonky line uh, but I mean, what are we gonna do we just got a dribble let's hope side number two is better that one was the least showing so Let's see. This is not an advert for Dremel, but I mean, check this out. Oh, that is easy. I've only got one more. Oh no, I hope we can do it with this. <laughs> Bloody hot. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, that wasn't very much fun. <laughs> Used up two cutting discs, it's awful. I've got to be careful because these edges are very sharp. But it's not looking terrible, I mean at a distance. <laughs> at a distance it's kind of respectable. And there's the super sharp uh, cut off. Could actually be useful, I'm going to save that. Next thing to do is file it so it's not so dangerous. Well, I saved you the horrible metal scraping sounds of the filing. Uh, it's slightly more respectable. It's all right, isn't it? Uh, it's not going to be like a centerpiece display anyway. There's going to be things like on top of the lid, so it doesn't matter too much. The front edge, which is uh, this edge, um, it's not too bad. So, yeah, the back one's the wobbly one. Uh, <laughs> I put some scratches in with the file, what an idiot, I was doing quite well. Ah, oh well. Now onto the acrylic. Well, the problem is with this is it's going to be a bit difficult to cut uh, because it's so thick. Normally I would just score it with a blade and snap it, but uh, it's going to be too thick I reckon to do that. It'll probably like, shatter along the edge. Should not be good. Uh, I've only got this one big piece and it's not big enough to uh, make a mistake. Uh, trouble is, I'm a bit short of money at the moment, so like, I don't want to go out and buy a 
specific fine tooth blade for my table saw but equally I don't want to mess this up and have to buy another piece of acrylic it's gonna be just as expensive so uh, what to do okay what I do have is a jigsaw and that's got a fine tooth blade in it uh, so I think if I can come up with a jig so that I can guide this in a straight line across it that might work let's find out okay we have a janky setup fingers crossed Ah, uh, here goes nothing. Oh no. What happened there? What the f uh, the actual uh, jigsaw itself was going perfect along the uh, along the straight edge, but the bloody blade was bent. So it's uh <laughs> it's gone off. Uh, I didn't notice. Uh, I can't I can't tell you how annoyed I am at myself. I've got one more big sheet of clear stuff, but it is special stuff. It's like um fake glass. I don't want to use that. Uh, I'm just gonna have to have to cut this again and try and make it straight and it's just gonna be short off the side of the VCR but like I'm not spending that amount of money for this simple project I can't believe I let the line wander look how bad that is redo it redo it come on come on come on do you know what it's not too bad it's only this far in from the edges so I can cope with that gotta do one more cut now Cross it. Okay, that's good enough. Let's uh, see it on the top. It's uh, not too bad. But the dodgy cut on the back side, I think. Right, it's on there now. I'm gonna line it up and then uh, drill on through the uh, perspex and the uh, metal so we get the holes exactly right and gotta make sure I drill it in a place where uh, you can fit a nut under. Okay, and after a good polish, let's slide it on, hopefully for the last time. Uh, there we go, come on. Oh yeah! Let's get those last two screws just in the side. I think we'll be done. Please let it be done. <laughs> the lessons here, if you've got multiple cuts or holes to drill, do the one first, it's going to show the least. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I think we're pretty good here. Do you know what? When I started this, I was going to aim for looking proper profesh, but the fact that you can tell it's been cut out by hand, actually, I think is a good thing. I mean, it is obvious that I've done this on purpose. It didn't just come like this. And I think it's really cool, actually. And do you know what? For the amount I screwed up, <laughs> I've actually persevered, and it's not bad. So that's an achievement. I thought this would take about 10 minutes, but... It's been a couple of hours now. Oh my goodness. You just never ever know what's gonna happen when you start these things. Okay, let's fire it up. Yes! So our light shielding is working pretty good. That's great. Look at that. Let's go, let's hook it up to a TV. Okay, big moment, here we go. Let's put it in. Let's watch it all wrap around there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is it gonna play? Yes! There we go! Yes! The crowd goes wild! <laughs> oh, everybody loves it! Our mission was called a successful failure, and that we Well, yeah, it was, a, it was it. a successful failure. I'll go with that. Yeah. Man, that's just unbelievable. You have to do it. So let's uh, stop it and eject. Sick. Then we can put it back in and watch it knock the tape around the playback head. That's really cool. I didn't realise this has got a really good uh, documentary at the end of it <laughs> as an ad added extra on the tape. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch that. There it goes, rewinded. Keeps making some dodgy noises. It's scaring me. I'm just gonna chew the light tape. Oh, at least I've got two other copies of Apollo 13. It's not the end of the world. There's Jim Lovell. Oh, I'm remembering why we went to DVDs. This has taken ages. I think uh, I think we did a good job here. Not bad. Oh, I'm just glad it's over. It's done. Another tick. Another tick on the long road. Uh, and uh, all good. Cool. If you want to see this, this is gonna be the machine as Bristronica. And it's actually not just going to be doing this, it's going to be switching between different signals. Um, 
with the relay module. Um, so that's going to be really cool, and I'll keep that as a surprise just for now, uh, but you'll see that soon enough. Well, if you're still watching, <laughs> thanks for staying with me. Uh, you can see uh, other videos that aren't available just on uh, the public YouTube through the Patreon links. And now is a perfect time to go and buy yourself one of these uh, relay modules because I, I need to buy some more acrylic. So uh, please go ahead and visit the shop links below. All right, cool. See you later. Oh, that's cool, isn't it?